the trees fade away and you come up upon these beautiful views as you hike along this ridge line these views just carry you forward towards the dome and you can just realize there's so many adventures going on all around me and i'm about to become one of these adventurers it's such an accomplishment you felt as if yosemite might have taken you away and it said here you are you're in the moment you're present you're surrounded by beautiful nature only very few people a year ever reach the top and i want you to be one of them hey guys i'm so happy to have you here and to show you what half dome is all about i thought i'd start by just telling you a little bit about myself i fell in love with the outdoors when i hiked the pacific crest trail which is a 2650 mile long trail that goes all the way from mexico through california oregon and washington and it ends in canada and i realized i felt so at home in nature i loved using nature as a way to challenge myself and learn about myself and grow and i thought i want to help other people access nature in the same way so i became a guide i worked for other companies doing sea kayaking in Alaska, glacier hiking and bear watching, backpacking in Alaska and Utah. Well, now I own my own company, the Lamplighters Adventuring Society, where I take people backpacking in Alaska, Yellowstone, and Yosemite, which is where Half Dome is located. I wanted to show you why the Sierra Nevada mountain range is such a special, spectacular place to visit. And the Sierra Nevada mountain range is where Yosemite is located, the national park that contains Half Dome, as you can see in this picture. Then I want to take you on a virtual adventure. I'm going to lead you. We're going to start from the valley floor of Yosemite, and we're going to hike up to Half Dome together through our computers, and you're going to join me at the top of the dome before we hear some adventure stories by April, Nellie, and Lynn, who are my previous clients, who will tell you what it's like to be up there firsthand. First, let's set the scene. I want to show you what the trip is all about and get you in the right mood for adventure. So here's a short little video I made to show you what this trip is like. Well, let's start by showing you where the trip takes place. The Sierra Nevada mountain range, which is right there in California in the United States, and it runs along the eastern edge of California. It's actually 400 miles long and 80 miles wide. It's a vast wilderness area. In the 1600s, the first Spanish settlers to the area named it the Sierra Nevadas because that means the snowy mountain range. And they are absolutely correct. In Lake Tahoe, you can see right here on the map, from now till this Sunday, they're about to have a storm and it's going to drop five to eight feet of snow in this one storm. This mountain range is so special because although california has almost 40 million people it's such a busy state they've managed to maintain a complete wilderness in this mountain range there's very few roads that cross over it there's almost no towns that exist up high in the mountain range it's a total wilderness for us to explore in the busiest state in the country and as you can see from these photos it's just stunningly beautiful. It's my favorite place to explore in the United States. You might be wondering, how did it stay so wild? 
Here on this map, you can see that there's a 211 mile the John Muir Trail that crosses three national parks, Yosemite National Park, Kings Canyon, and Sequoia National Park. And for these 211 miles, it's totally unbroken. There's no roads, there's no towns, there's nothing up there. It also crosses Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the lower 48 United States. And there's me on top of it. In 1849, when gold was discovered in the foothills of the Sierra mountain range, people flocked over to seek their fortune, and they became known as the 49ers, which is how the San Francisco football team got its name. These 49ers set up mining camps and did begin to log the foothills of the Sierras. Luckily, John Muir was born and lived in Yosemite. He was born in Scotland in the 1830s, but he immigrated to the United States as a child, and as a young man, he became a shepherd in Yosemite Valley. Over time, he started to realize that all the livestock that was grazing in Yosemite was causing a lot of damage to such a beautiful landscape. He decided to petition Congress, and he was successful. In 1890, Congress did pass a bill lobbied by John Muir to protect Yosemite Valley. So John Muir saved Yosemite Valley. The rest of the Sierras, we also need to thank John Muir for because he went on to create the Sierra Club, which is an organization dedicated to preserving the whole mountain range, and then a prolific nature writer. And because of his legacy, preserving Yosemite, starting the Sierra Club, and establishing a love for the Sierras through his writings, almost the entire mountain range has been preserved today, including Yosemite National Park. This view here, you can see Bridalville Falls, Glacier Point. Here's Half Dome there, way in the back. Clouds Rest, and El Capitan, famously climbed most recently in the film Free Solo by Alex Honnold here on screen with us. He climbed it without using any ropes. Here's Half Dome, which is the icon of Yosemite. This strangely shaped dome is now the mascot of the park. It's actually a pool of magma that cooled under the earth into this strange shape. And then the glacier in the valley that you can see on your screen scraped away 20% of the dome, creating this bizarre half dome structure that we find so beautiful and that compels us to climb it. It was considered to be totally impossible to climb up until 1875. George G. Anderson was determined to make it up there and he tried a few different methods. The first thing that he tried to do was collect the pitch from nearby trees and make a glue. And he put it on the bottom of his shoes and he tried to just walk up the dome like that. But surprisingly, it was actually too sticky and his shoes got stuck to the rock and he realized this is not a good method. I'm gonna have to come back. So he did return with some tools, some rope and some bolts and a drill. And he drilled these bolts into the rock, attached this rope. And through this method, he was able to make it up. He went home and got his friend, his friend's son, his friend's daughter, and his friend's mother-in-law, who was 65, and brought them up too. And now we use a similar route to George here. You can see the cables here that we've put into the rock, Yosemite Rangers have, and our route doesn't take place too far from where he originally went. Now, 5 million visitors a year, more or less, visit Yosemite Valley, and only a tiny fraction of them are able to make it up to the top of that dome. If you look down at the bottom of the photo, you can see some cars. Most people stand up at their cars and just look up in awe. And whether it's because of their physical ability that's required to make it up, or their fear of heights, or the difficulty in getting a permit, only very few people a year ever reach the top. And I want you to be one of them. Here's one way you can make it up. But the way I do it is by backpacking. It allows us to take more time and enjoy ourselves. These are all the main trailheads that you can use to access Half Dome. My favorite way and the classic route is the Happy Isles Trailhead, which starts here in Yosemite Valley. It allows you to see the beautiful Mist Trail, some of Yosemite's famous waterfalls, and then get to the top of the dome. And here is how to do it. When I do this trip in four days, I arrive on day one and I arrive by 7 a.m. because Yosemite Valley gets very crowded with visitors and I wanna get a good parking spot. 
and then I spend the day in Yosemite Valley's front country. This allows me the chance to acclimate to the elevation, and you don't want to miss out on all the beauty Yosemite has to offer. So this is just a good way to get started. Here's what it looks like. Let's look for climbers on El Capitan. Bridalville Falls. Well, that was wet. Yosemite Falls, the tallest in North America. We spend our first night in the backpackers campground. Here's some of my favorites. Looking at El Capitan, visiting Yosemite Falls, which is the tallest waterfall in all of North America. If you're gonna do this on day one, make sure to save some energy because it's a pretty hard hike and you got some more hiking to do tomorrow. Here's some other things I like to do on, on day one. The top photo is tunnel view. The bottom left photo is called the swinging bridge view and that's Yosemite Falls in the background. And then also there's some historic landmarks like the Awani Hotel which is absolutely stunning to go look around. And you can see some Native American artifacts if you go inside. On day one it's really fun to go camp in the Yosemite Valley Backpackers Campground. Only people with a backpacking permit are allowed to stay there. That's what makes it so fun because you're surrounded only by adventurers. Everyone there is collected and they're all gearing up to go embark on their journeys throughout the park that night. And then also after the sun goes down and the sky gets dark, you can start looking around you at all the walls of the valley around you and you'll start seeing little spots of light coming on, coming to life and you realize you're surrounded by adventurers. Those light bulbs that you see are the headlamps of climbers who decided to spend the night on the walls of either North Dome or Half Dome or El Capitan. And you can just realize there's so many adventures going on all around me and I'm about to become one of these adventurers. On day two, here's the route. You'll start at the group campsite. That's what it's called on the map, but it's the backpackers campground and make your way to Happy Isles Trailhead, where you'll enter the mouth of a beautiful canyon, which is the Mist Trail. And you'll make your way up a long series of stairs, past Vernal Falls, up, 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 past Nevada Falls, and into the back country, where you'll stay for the night in this wilderness campsite called Little Yosemite Valley. Here's what it looks like on day two. Day two of the Half Dome Hikers Club. Make sure to bring a raincoat. On day two, we wake up in the backpackers campground. I cook my clients breakfast and make them coffee while they pack their bags up. And we start hiking through the forest. And the first mile or so of the trail, it's pretty good warm up. It's flat. You're going through the trees. The sun is shining. There's always a lot of birds chirping. And you follow this river, the Merced River, to Happy Isles Trailhead. Once you get to the Happy Isles Trailhead, the adventure truly begins on the mist trail. This long set of stairs has been carved into the mountain, as you can see here where these people are climbing, and goes for a few miles up into the wilderness of Yosemite. Here's some of the fun things about it. Like about a mile into the trail, we'll start hearing the rush of water around the next corner, and I'll stop my clients and I'll say, um, if you guys are wanting to get wet, then stay as you are, but if not, you might want to put on your raincoat. And we turn the corner, and we're greeted with Vernal Falls just towering over us. And if you go in the early season, like June or July, this waterfall will have so much snow melt that it will actually just blast you 
like a hurricane, just windy. Oh my gosh, it's so discombobulating, but it's really fun. After having lunch at the top of Bernal Falls, we continue on through the Lemis Trail and we reach Nevada Falls. This part in the trip, my clients usually feel that the adventure has truly begun. And this is because they have a mental decision to make. This trail has been very strenuous. They're climbing, 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 all these steps. It's hot, it's sunny, and they're tired. At the same time, there's so much beauty around them and so much beauty up ahead. And so they're thinking in their heads, oh, this is really hard. Am I gonna be miserable all day? Am I gonna turn around? And no, they always decide to embrace the spirit of adventure and realize this can be a hard challenge and it can be the most beautiful thing I've ever done. And those aren't mutually exclusive. And that's what the spirit of adventure is all about. And we continue on past the mist trail into the back country to our campsite. This is called the Little Yosemite Valley Wilderness Camp. We earned a well-deserved swim in the Merced River on the sandy beach right next to camp. But my favorite thing about this campsite is that it's right in the shadow of Half Dome. If you look through the trees on the picture on your left, you can see Half Dome just looming over you above the campsite. And before the sun sets, we always look up there and we see little tiny specks, just little tiny dots of people slowly making their way down the dome before the sun sets. And we realize that's going to be us tomorrow. And it's so exciting. It's kind of like scary. It's compelling. It fills you with so much energy that it makes it so you can barely sleep because you know Half Dome is looming over you, daring you to climb her, and you know tomorrow is the big day. That's day three. On day three, we do seven miles and we got to climb 2,700 feet to reach the top of the dome. We start here at the Wilderness Campground and we make it up the John Muir Trail, climb through the woods on the Half Dome Trail before we reach the crest of a mountain where we hike along with beautiful views. This part is called the sub dome. And then we make it up the famous cable climb right here to the top of half dome. Here's what day three looks like. All right, today's the big day. Today's the day we're gonna climb the dome. We wake up early in the morning or I actually sometimes leave a little bit later in the morning so we miss the crowds in the middle of the day. It also gives you some better lighting for photos if you get to the dome early or late. Today, my clients only, we only have to pack what we need for the day. We can leave camp in place and only carry water, snacks, lunch, some layers. And this allows us to not have to carry so much weight on our pack. But remember, it's still 2,700 feet of elevation gained. And then we have to go back down. So it's still a pretty hard day. We start out in the forest doing a bunch of switchbacks for just a mile or so. But just when you feel like you have reached the end of your rope and you've had enough of the switchbacks look what you see the trees fade away and you come up upon these beautiful views as you hike along this ridge line these views just carry you forward towards the dome my favorite part of this day is when the dome comes into view you can actually see not in this photo but with your bare eyes you can see little tiny climbers making their way up and at this point on the trip you start to feel like, what have I gotten myself into? I cannot believe what those people are doing up, the, up there. How are they hanging on to the rock? What does it look like? 
what am I about to get myself into? And you just become filled with energy and curiosity. You have to know what is going on up there and it compels you to go forward. Eventually, you reach the subdome. This is the first challenge that you have to get through to get to the half dome cable climb. As you can see, there is trail that's been cut into the side of this mountain here. And it challenges you in two ways. On one hand, the sub dome is physically exhausting because you're climbing up this stone staircase. And on the other hand, you're also on the edge of this cliff, which kind of gives you a little bit of a feel for what you're going to feel like on the cables. If you uh, are afraid of heights, it'll give you a little taste and help you get ready for the big cable climb up ahead. We made it to the top of the sub dome, guys. There's only one challenge left in front of us and as you can see behind Lindsay here it's the half dome cable climb at this point in the journey half my clients take a look at those cables and they say oh that doesn't look too bad they're trying to reassure themselves that they got this under control and the other half of my clients are saying let's go let's do this let's get up there as fast as we can before they chicken out but it's important at this part to stop and take a rest, tie your shoes tightly, pack everything up tightly into your backpack, put on your climbing gloves, and really make sure that you're not tired when you reach the cables. Because this is what they look like. This is the point when you realize that your goal is up ahead and you're going to commit to it no matter what. It looks pretty scary, but I want to tell you some easy ways to climb it. One is to keep in mind that it's only a 45 degree angle. It feels much worse, but it's only 45 degrees. The other thing is you can see these planks that the national park has put out all along the way to go up there. So all you have to do is make it from one plank to another, climb, 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 stop and rest on the plank, catch your breath, climb again, stop on the next one. Don't look around, don't look to the side, don't look down, just focus on climbing, rest, climb, and little by little, step by step, you will accomplish this beautiful goal. It uses a lot of upper body strength. As you can see, Lindsay here, she's reaching for the cable in front of her, pulling herself up the dome as she walks. And here you can see Abby actually at the top of the dome and how tired she is. One of my favorite parts of today is that you're surrounded by international travelers. This is such a hiking hotspot that people from all over the world come to climb Half Dome. And it's really fun to meet them all and hear all the different accents. In fact, this guy who took this photo on the right was from England. He was a crazy wild man who had no fear. And I don't take out my phone on the cables and I don't like, suggest you do either because you need to focus on climbing. But if this crazy English man is ready to take photos of us, I'll let him. And that's how we got this awesome photo. We made it up to the top. It's really time to celebrate when you make it up to the top. It's such an accomplishment. You felt as if Yosemite might have taken you away and it said, here you are. You're in the moment. You're present. You're surrounded by beautiful nature. You've just hiked up 5,000 feet. You've spent the night in the backcountry. You just climbed these scary cables. It's really time to celebrate and feel proud of this lifetime accomplishment. You could spend about two hours on the top of the dome looking at all the views, but also celebrating with everybody up there. The camaraderie up there is so special. You have these people from all over the world who just accomplished something together that very few people ever do, and you want to talk to each other about it and meet each other. You're all part of this special club now that nobody will know what it's like except for you guys. It's really fun. So after you meet everybody, you go around and look at all the views. Here's a famous ledge where we can take pictures of. Down at the bottom, you'll see Yosemite Valley. That's where we started our trek two days ago. And here we are at the top of the dome. It feels like such an accomplishment. Here's the ledge from another angle. And this is what I mean by it's kind of fun to go up in the morning or in the evening because you get such beautiful lighting. Although you made it to the top of the dome, you still have to go back down. Don't worry though, it's actually easier. And surprisingly, you go down backwards and you actually save your arm strength because you just hold on to the cable, kind of lower yourself down as you go. After you hike back down through the forest and back to camp, it's time for a refreshing dip in the Merced River. And I think this photo is funny because you can see how tired my clients are here on the left, just totally conked out on the beach, sunburnt and tired. They've earned their rest today.
Day four, the last day of our adventure. It's time to hike down. We'll pack up camp here in Little Yosemite Valley Wilderness Campground, and we'll hike down on the John Muir Trail this time. Down, 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 down into Yosemite Valley, where our trip is complete. I want to show you all the beauty of day four with this video. The first sight of day four is crossing over the top of Nevada Falls. This is why I like going in June and July because the waterfalls are so much higher and you get these stunning viewpoints. To hike down, we take the John Muir Trail. One reason is because the Mist Trail is very skinny and narrow and it's better to just let people go up it and we'll go down the John Muir Trail where we can actually contemplate our route. My clients today are usually really peaceful. They usually don't talk much because they get to experience the overview of what they just accomplished. Like behind these guys here, you can see Half Dome. Here down below them is where the Mist Trail was located, where they hiked up into the wilderness. They get to contemplate the journey they just took and keep in mind the pride they feel at overcoming such a cha challenge. There's a lot for them to reflect on today. And it's also pretty fun that the hikers coming up as you're going down will see us with these big backpacks and they're like, what did you just do up there? How long were you there for? And they look at you in awe. And they should because it's a huge accomplishment what we just did. That's the journey. Thanks for joining me on our adventure to Half Tome, guys. I have invited with me today three of my clients and they'll tell you about what it's like. So we have Lynn here. Lynn has done this trip twice. The first time she didn't make it up. So she decided to do it again and she brought her grandson with her and they both made it to the top of the dome. April has a fear of heights, but she loves to challenge herself. So she decided to do the half dome trek as a way to show herself what she's capable of. And Nellie, who actually doesn't like hiking, but she decided that she wanted to have this experience that would change her life and make her think about herself in a new way. Let's tell everybody about what it was like. I have a couple questions for you that I figure would help illuminate the trail for everybody who's watching and give them a firsthand experience of what you might encounter. So why did you guys want to backpack to Half Dome in the first place? Well, I wanted to take my grandson. The second time I went, I took my grandson, who was 15 at the time. And I really wanted to get to the top because the first time I didn't make it to the top, I turned around halfway up. And I always had wished that I had pressed on and done it, but it just didn't happen. But taking my grandson the second time and with all the encouragement and just the great way of looking at things, you know, it's you break it down into little sections. You do a little section and hey, you're closer than you were. And that really helped me to finish this trip. And seeing my grandson climb up to the top, I went first. And then when he made it up, the tears in both of our eyes, it was just, it was thrilling to have that memory between the two of us that it's going to last my lifetime. So it, it was just an incredible trip. Glad I did it. That was really fulfilling for me too. To, I got to have you guys both up there. I love when families come. It's such a bonding experience. What do you guys think is the hardest part about preparing for the trip? For me, I mean, I had never hiked. I had just done day hikes around Phoenix and like I had never planned a hike before or I didn't even know you needed a permit at first. So I started like I had gone to Yosemite for Christmas and I had seen Half Dome from the ground below and thought that looks really cool. I didn't even know you could hike up it at first. Once I learned you could, I was like, I definitely want to do that. But I didn't know the first thing about how to plan for that. So someone actually recommended Jesse to me for getting the permit, planning it out, knowing what you needed to bring, like all of the things that I would not have felt comfortable doing it by myself or 
without knowing what I was doing, it really alleviated that fear for me from the beginning. So the whole planning process was pretty, it would have been pretty crazy if I hadn't had your help, Jesse. So thank you. But it, um, definitely the permit, I went on the website to get a permit at the beginning and I was like, not only did I not know like what to select, but I also realized how difficult it is to even, I think it's like a lottery system or something. It's it's just not that easy. So that part of it for me was one of the most daunting ones. And one of the things that I was glad once I got connected with you, I was like, oh, okay, if this guy can just kind of take care of that for me. Yeah, that's what fulfills me too. I also look at Half Tome from the valley floor and look up at it even today and like, I made it up there before and I'm about to do it again. It just seems like an impossible feat. And that's why I love bringing you guys up there. Did anything about the journey surprise you guys? I was surprised by it because like you said, I don't love hiking. I like physical challenges and just staying active. But for me, it's usually like an hour of something and then I go about my day. Whereas this, it seemed never ending. And I thought, oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I want to like conquer the challenge, but an all day affair just was daunting to me. But by the end of it, as you were saying, by day four, when your clients head down, it was just like the most peaceful experience to realize everything I had accomplished. And then I won't say that I love hiking, but it definitely showed me that I don't mind it. I'm like, I wouldn't plan it myself. I would hire somebody to plan it for me and go along with that. But what I got out of it was more than just like, oh yes, I accomplished that physical activity. And it was more like a spiritual, personal growth experience for me at that point. I love to hear that. What did you guys feel like climbing the cables? Climbing the cables was a little bit just daunting because of the hikers going up and the hikers going down. But really, when you get in your rhythm and they've got their rhythm, I felt safe the whole time. I've seen people go on the outside of the cables, which and it wasn't for me. It's not a great idea for me. And I've also seen people wear harnesses and clip in and unclip. And it, it just use the cables the way they're designed, wear your gloves. And it really, it wasn't impossible. It was, it was fine. It was great. I'm in my late 60s and it really was not a problem for me as long as i did it the way that it's supposed to be yeah there is a method to climbing the cables like make sure that you keep as much of your shoe on the ground as possible to get more traction rather than walking on your toes putting on your gloves so your hand can slide along the cables using really good communication with other climbers being very loud and clear and if somebody's trying to pass you move to the right Tell them, wait one minute, I'm going to get stable, find yourself a stable spot, and then tell them, okay, I'm ready for you to pass me, you can go around me. So there is a method that I tell everybody how to use and how to use these cables safely in a manner that won't feel panicky. How did it feel when you guys made it to the top? My grandson decided not to go. It was too much for him, and he got to sub dome and said, I just, I don't want to do it. And I said, okay do you mind if I continue up? And he said, no. So I went up to the top and I was up about 20 minutes. And all of a sudden here comes this blonde head popping up. He made it and the tears, I still get choked up today because that's an experience. You know, some people get that experience, but I just, like I said, it will stick with me forever. It was just incredible to have him up there with me. And for us to have this bonding moment as a family, I can't tell you how rewarding that was. So that's how I felt, just exhilarated. I really do think that this accomplishing this goal is life-changing. I remember that moment. I was, that was so, so fulfilling to bring you and Tanner up there together. I'm so glad you guys made it together. Do you guys have anything that you'll take from the adventure back into your normal lives, your daily lives? I did it half to years ago and I still think about it. And I've done other hikes in the meantime, other long backpacking adventures. But for me, half dome, not only the dome itself, but even the hike all the way up there, I still kind of have those snapshots in my head of just the majestic beauty. I mean, you could see in a lot of 
the video that you showed, like the river, the views on the way up, the sub dome itself. I remember, I think that was one of my biggest takeaways was even just accomplishing the sub dome felt like this is something I never would have thought I could do. It's really given me a lot of confidence in day-to-day little activities. You're like, oh, I hiked off dome before. I mean, I don't re- literally think that in my mind, but I think you do gain this sense of accomplishment and confidence that carries over into other things. And you're able to look back on those little snapshots of the beauty and the camaraderie that you talked about, just the adventure. It comes up for me occasionally, I would say maybe even weekly, that I just have a little really nice memory of Hop Down that brings some light to my day. Do you guys have any final statements or any thoughts you'd like to tell the people who are watching or just learning about the trip? I was impressed along the entire route of the range of people, ages, types of people, everything coming down and hiking up. It was It's for everybody. Honestly, once you get up to the dome, the main thing for me was just a mental challenge to overcome. Physically, I was like, okay, I can do this. Mentally, I was freaking myself out. Once I just like, no, you made it this far. You're you have to accomplish this. You're not turning back. You just have to keep going. I think that was my biggest takeaway from it. Yeah, I feel like you learn so much when you climb Half Dome. For those of you who feel like this has inspired you and something that you might like to do, here's a few last details that you might like to know. Like, besides your backpacking gear, Half Dome requires you to pay attention to two specific pieces of gear. One is gloves because you have to be able to grab that metal cable and you don't necessarily want to just like let go, but you want to be able to slide your hands along it. I just go to Home Depot and get some leather gloves. You could use climbing gloves, any kind of well-fitting gloves, and then pay attention to what kind of shoes you wear. Don't do this in sneakers. You're going to need either boots or trail running shoes because they have a lot of grip on the bottom and Half Dome's surface is very smooth. It's been worn even smoother from all the hikers. So definitely wear boots or trail running shoes. A lot of times people ask me if they need a harness and I don't provide them for my clients, but it is up to them if they want to bring one. From the research I've done and from what Yosemite, the park itself, their standpoint, it's this. If you already have a harness and a carabiner and you're a climber, the cable climb isn't going to be very hard for you. It's going to be something that you're used to. If you never have been a climber and you bring a harness and a carabiner fresh, it's going to be a lot that you're fumbling around with during a time when you really need to be focused. So if you have a carabiner and a harness, what you're going to have to do is unclip around each of these poles, clip back in, slide it along unclip, clip back in, slide it along over and over and over again. In my opinion, when you are a little bit rattled from the height, you feel like you're hanging on the edge of a cliff. The last thing you want to be doing is like messing with a carabiner that you're unfamiliar with. So that's why I just tell my clients it's up to you if you bring one or not. The client most recently who did bring one got to the cables and decided, "Uh, I don't want to deal with this. I'm just going to climb it. Here's two things that you might want to be aware of in Yosemite. The altitude, you're going to be up in the mountains. The whole trip is under 9,000 feet, so it's not incredibly high altitude. This is why I suggest people camp out in the backpackers campground in Yosemite Valley the first night. Helps you get acclimated. And then also, the one event that can get in the way of getting to the top of the dome is a rainstorm. Never climb the dome. If it's wet, it's going to be really slippery. And then also lightning can strike you up there. Almost all the incidents that have happened on the dome have occurred because of weather. It's just not safe and it's not worth risking it. There's other routes you can do in the area where you can go see more beautiful waterfalls, more beautiful viewpoints in case of a rainstorm. Don't risk your life. The last thing I want to tell you is that this is a strenuous trip and you should train in advance. I have a training system, which is three months in advance. I have my clients hike four miles with a thousand feet of elevation gain if they can. Two months, they do that same hike twice a week, but they increase the elevation gain. And one month in advance, they do that hike twice a week and increase the elevation gain again. And the way you can find hikes near you no matter where in the world you live. I use this app called All Trails where you just type in the mileage you want, the elevation gain you want, and then it shows you what's around you. 
It's a really great way to train for this hike. And if you train, you'll be ready for the trip and I have no doubt you can make it to the top. Thanks all of you guys watching. I really appreciate your interest in Half Dome and hope you guys end up doing it. You'll love it.